But yeah, getting back to this topic of like guest characters and cross promotion, like I said, I generally like to see guest characters. I might not like them all. There are some guest characters that I think would be better fits in other fighting games. And even though the presence of guest characters doesn't offend me that greatly, again, that point about the fact that they're becoming less and less of a novelty and more and more of a promotional and marketing tactic, I can't disagree with that. Like I said, we have this cyberpunk character coming to Guilty Gear. You go over again to Mortal Kombat 1 that I think went crazy with it because they had three. Three guest characters, three original. And two of those characters, Homelander and Omni-Man, they were definitely used for cross-promotion. Again, in case you don't know, when that first combat pack was formally revealed, a new season of Invincible had been confirmed at the very same event. And not to mention when The Boys, the new season came out, that is around the time Homelander was released in this game. And honestly, at this point, it's like looking at even Mortal Kombat 11, they even did this when it came to the Terminator because Terminator Dark Fate came out not that long after that character was put in Mortal Kombat 11. Of course, if anybody would definitely dip into the freaking wells of cross promotion and stuff, it would be freaking Warner Brothers. Of course it would be them. But then, of course, we got to talk about Street Fighter 6. You see, this particular cross-promotion doesn't bother me that much because if it's cross-promotion with two fighting game series, especially, and I'm jumping ahead here, the fact that it could possibly, possibly lead us to the return of one of the best Capcom versus crossovers not named MVC, I'm all for it. And not to mention, as many people have also pointed out, Street Fighter... Fatal Fury, there's history there. The creator of both series is Takashi Nishiyama, the same person created and birthed both of these series. So the history is definitely there. But again, even though not a lot of this bothers me too much, I do think the people who are detractors have a point when they're saying that it seems like this is too prevalent. It's like almost every fighting game that's going right now as far as like new stuff, is doing it. Almost. That is the reason why I kept thinking that we were about to see a Capcom character get into KOF 15. They didn't announce it that weekend, but something else did come of that. That was some other cross promotion. And the thing was, I was hyped to see a Terry trailer at Evo once that weekend had started, but in the middle of it, I'm thinking like, wait a minute. The last time they brought out a new character for Street Fighter 6, last EVO we got a teaser and it was Aki. So of course we were going to get a teaser for Terry this time around. And he's coming out in the autumn, which is still a ways away from us. But yeah, I'm still looking forward to seeing how he's going to play in that game. I'm definitely going to pick him up. I'm going to pick Mai up. Like I know a lot of people were not hot about those two guest characters. And slightly going back to something I just thought about when it comes to like the oversaturation of guest characters, one point that I keep hearing is, oh, these guest characters took up slots for characters that deserve them. Here's my thing, because <laughs> I even asked on Twitter, I asked a question that I wish got more engagement, but I am not that big of a content creator, so it was kind of meh. I had a little bit of hope for more when Raito ADV reposted what I tweeted. But unfortunately, only one person answered. And I mean, I'm still thankful for the fact they answered. I just wish that I would have gotten more perspectives. Because I'm pretty sure everybody has a different take on, like, deserving. The only answer that I got was this here. It could be for characters that haven't been in the game for a long time. Which, I want to add to that a little bit. If it's for a character that hasn't been in the game for a long time that a lot of people really like and they really miss them. Yeah. Sure, they haven't had any screen time, the people want them back, yeah, I could agree with that. Because at this point, a lot of characters that haven't been in games for a long time, a lot of them got scrapped just because simply, nobody really cared. Whether it's the fact that they didn't have a lot of fan support, or if the big suits up there and the devs weren't really hot on them. Because the fans have their favorites and the devs have theirs. With Xanadu, SNK admitted that Xanadu was a favorite of the staff. 
not so much a favorite of the fans. And I like Xanadu. I think Xanadu should have been brought back because that guy literally has a lot to offer, but I almost feel like he's meant to be a one and dunner. Just by the way they presented him and just by what happened to his comrades. Or his former comrades now. Chang and Choi are back with Kim and he is still out there in the middle of the desert looking into a fire and saying whatever jimbo jambo mumbo jumbo that he can put out. It's safe to say I think that character is going to be permanently on the shelf no matter how much I would like to see him back. The person goes on to then add a newcomer that was just introduced. Which is very funny because I just finished talking about Xanadu. <laughs> But I do get that. You know, especially if this newcomer is very critical to the story. Yes, I do think they are deserving of a return. Deserving of a slot, if you will. But again, it's like, with these particular examples that I've given, if you take away like what I added to the first one, like, you know, characters that haven't been in the game for a long time, I'm pretty sure there are some characters that applies to that I'm sure a lot of people would not want back. And the crazy thing is, the next thing this person listed is something that I kind of already said. A character with an unfinished storyline. More than likely that newcomer that has just been introduced is going to have a storyline that spans more than one game. There have been some very strange one and dunners in fighting games. There's a nice little video out there talking about that, which I think you should check out if you haven't. But yeah. Even though after some other happenings and some other reveals at EVO, a lot of people just think that the story just doesn't mean anything anymore. And I get why they say that. Even though I think that's a bit too dramatic for someone who kind of didn't like this other thing that was revealed a little bit later, which I am going to get to. But at the same time, I can understand the attitude. The fact that Kenso had that Dragon Spirit arc and SNK has just pretty much left it on the shelf and Kenso didn't even make a significant appearance, whether it was being playable in the game or even a cameo in the story. Hein had more of a significance as an NPC or at least like a character that was mentioned in the stories. And he did, of course, make an appearance in the Secret Agent team ending. Hein even had some significance when it came to the story and he wasn't even playable. Kenso didn't even have anything like that. Another thing this person mentioned was characters that seem like no-brainers to have. I'm not going to say too much about that. I think that's pretty much set in stone. You're not going to have a Street Fighter without Ryu. And it's... <laughs> and it's... <laughs> try it if you want to, but you're not going to get far. You're not going to. Street Fighter without Ken, Chun-Li, you're not going to get far. Going over to KOF, a KOF without Kyo not gonna work without terry rio not gonna work y'all get the picture the last thing that this person mentioned was characters that are fan favorites again i kind of mentioned this with their earlier point of characters that haven't been in the game for a long time now i'm guessing that they were just listing this as individual factors but honestly a mixture of these factors if you got like at least two of them i think yeah deserving overall i do think this was a very solid take let me know what you think if there's anything else also big shout outs to linguini 97 who is the person in question that responded to my question thank you so much like i said i wish more people had engaged but hey one person did and i'm thankful for that but i do want to say this in regards to people thinking that certain characters like oh a guest character stole a slot unless you have some background information that we don't know the one thing that I've kind of come to grips with with fighting games, especially like within like the past year or so, especially when I started delving into stuff like the cutting room floor or interviews where, you know, developers are talking about characters that they scrapped last minute or characters that they wanted. Like, for instance, I don't have any proof that SNK wanted Mei Li Jinju in KOF 15. I can't get mad if a certain character was not in the plan from the get-go. Because I'm pretty sure a lot of these rosters and these characters are decided way ahead of time. So, like, I understand people might want some other characters instead of guests and everything, but how do you even know the character that you wanted or the one that you're talking about was even in the plans at all? I'm of the belief that you can't get too mad if they were never in the plan to begin with. I would be more upset, like, again... <laughs> 
this is kind of an example, but I can't believe it. we're going back to the freaking SNK panel. Who'd have thunk it? But for a little bit. Those concept sketches of Preacher, again, the Preacher we got is cool. She's fine. But some of those designs that were like concepts, those were better. Seeing that pissed me off. It really did.